Hello friends, Sniz here, and today we are playing games of Yut. Fun. Uh, I figured I'll go over the Master SS ring, and before I get started on that, I want to take time to note, and I'll do this at the beginning of every episode, there is a document in the description that has more in-depth information on the topics covered in each episode. Some topics I just gloss over and did not and probably will not give enough credit to in the video until much later. So if you want to see the summary of said topic, I would look in the video. If you need to see more in depth for further explanation, I would check the, I would check the, uh, I would check the, the document, sorry. Uh, getting distracted by my own gameplay of yet. Uh, anyways, the Master SS ring is one of the f one of the four best in slot rings uh, currently available. Uh, it's an event ring. It's come back twice since the initial release, and this is the second or third time it's ever been available. I believe. Hopefully, that's correct. Either way, there is uh, the ring. <laughs> God, I'm so bad at this. The ring requires uh, you to craft gems, which you'll see in the future uh, future clip. But the way gems work is you are able to, I explained this earlier in another episode, but to go in more in depth, to get the master SS ring, you need to craft four S rings. To get S rings, you need to buy the ring itself, which costs 10. So you need to buy four of those. So that's 40 coins and then you need to get four S gems, which can take a lot of time if you're unlucky. The general synopsis is you can buy 15 boxes a day and whether you cap or not is really dependent on, I guess, how lucky you are with Yut and how, how good you are at the kite game because uh, for the most part, the quizzes that occur at the 15 minute mark of every hour, uh, you should be netting at least, well, at least five if you stay. Toward, uh, to the end and you miss every question but you should be netting about 20 25 per game uh yeah i'd average i average about like 25 now well like 20 20 ish even though i normally get them all right and get 75 a day from that alone but that significantly cuts down on what you're required to do also note that you can get coins from elite mobs if you're strong enough uh you can get up to 30 a day from elite mobs and it's a it's a chance drop too so just just be aware of that Either way, when you buy these 15 boxes, you can open them. You can receive anywhere between- you can receive any gem, actually, as far as I'm aware. It's just significantly lower chances to get any gem other than C. And then, once you have opened all your boxes and you are ready to craft, you'll note that you go to the moon bunny, click on the little spinning object, the, the enchanter, I guess you could call it. Uh, do not uh, click on the moon bunny itself, otherwise you'll get an explanation. When combining the gems, you need to combine two of the same tier to rank up. That means you will always get a, I mean, it'll always take one less, uh, you'll only get one out of the results, so you're always losing. Uh, so obviously if you were perfection, it would be eight gems total and you got every roll perfectly to equal one S duel. So the way it works is when you're combining C gems, there's a 70% chance to rank up and a 30% chance to stay the same. When you're combining B gems, you have a 50-50 chance of either tearing up or staying the same. Combining A gems is your lowest chance at 30% or, you know, obviously staying the same. And then once you have the S jewel, as explained before, you'll combine it with one of the generic rings, which you'll need four of. Uh, most most uh, players who are more uh, more motivated and more determined and more passionate about the game will recommend that you get two, one for drop gear and one for damage. Uh, I will be going for that. I'm actually going to be, at this point in time, since I'm so far behind on videos, I'm actually going for four now because I need two on the Thunderbreaker and I do want to work on Legion, which I'll get into probably in the next episode, but I want to work on Legion while also having something to play when I'm like not making much progress or hit a wall. So I started a Shadower and I'm enjoying the class a lot. It's 
still probably one of my favorite classes from back back then. Either way, I will see you in the next clip. Hopefully I don't get as distracted as I did in that, you know, previous rambling. But uh, we're here on Mr. Lee's Island. Uh, the most notable point of this island is that there is a 100 weapon attack, 10k health, and MP buff on here. Uh, well, 10, uh, 100 attack and uh, magic attack buff with 10k health and HP, uh, health and MP uh, along with it. It's a 30 minute buff, I believe, and you get it through doing a small little quest, I guess. Yeah, it's a quest. You, you get it through doing a small quest on the island that takes roughly anywhere between 10 to 15 minutes. I think most people average around 15-ish. It's all based on your luck. Uh, Matt or Misusing TV has a much more detailed video on it, so I will link it in the document and most likely in the description as well if you just want to immediately go to it where he explains everything. But the general synopsis is you will be hunting three types of dogs and you are yeah dog branch wolf branch and then you'll be hunting a hog 10 times the hog is the trickiest one because it spawns once per map once per map but you can leave and re-enter the map from when from the map you came from and it will not give you the random chance of leaving so you will always get the hog map again which allows you to easily get the 10. uh so what you're mainly going to be limited by is your luck of finding the maps and not really, not, nothing really else. It The spawn rate is also somewhat limited. It's around six per cycle, and unless you're using Kishin, which you're not going to have, unless you party yourself, I guess, because this is a party quest technically. But, you, you know, that causes other issues too, since both uh, players are individually ra rolling maps. Uh, what I would suggest is that you just do this every day. It's a daily. It's a notable daily and makes... It's basically a free Onyx apple without the requirement of marriage. And it's a guaranteed Onyx apple, uh, I believe. I don't believe uh, Onyx apples come with the 10k health, but... I do not know enough about Amoria or anything about APQ. Uh, Meta Mashup did a fantastic guide on that, so I'd recommend you check that out. I will also put a brief link into that because I will be going more in depth on what buffs to use on certain bosses uh, as soon as I get the chance. So, with all that explained, uh, yeah, we're starting to enter the dailies now that we've hit level 100. Not much else to go over than to say, welcome to the end of your life, I guess. The rest of your life, depending on how you take it. Either way, I will see you guys, friends later. I will be recording the next one immediately because I don't want to be this far behind as I am currently. With uh, a new event cycle out, the haste event done, and every all of that just, just fantastic, just fantastic stuff. Alright, I'm heading out. Peace.